And welcome back to Urban Outlook, an interesting conversation that we're having about an exhibit that's at Vanderbilt University's campus. You got to get there this month because it ends in March, but it's called Visionary Aponte Art and Black Freedom. Dr. William Luis is here. He is the Gertrude Conway Vanderbilt Endowed Chair and also a professor of the Department of Spanish and Portuguese um, and, and instrumental in helping along with other professors there on campus. I know you're not doing this solo and bringing this exhibit on campus. This is also open to the community. But we were, before we took a break, you were talking about the fact that, you know, these, these new contemporary artists of today about about 20 or so, interpreted the transcripts from the trial of Aponte in order to determine and recreate what they think he may have paint, mm -hmm. painted and done in his book of paintings that ended up being destroyed uh, in the whole course of things. But, but talk a little bit about you know what it takes to sort of reimagine what an artist wanted to portray originally, right? The brain mm -hmm. work that it's got to take mm -hmm. to sort of pick, try to figure out what techniques that that artist use and what can I use and how do I put my taste and twist on it mm -hmm. for today? Yes, so um, if once you begin to, um, to visit the exhibit and look at the images that uh, that you that have been incorporated into the uh, into the exhibit, you'll also see that uh, in uh, in the information that's provided, uh, each artist selected a particular part of the transcript. Mm -hmm. There's a picture they, we have there. Yes, on that and one. in this case is uh, Alexis Ezequiel. And so there is a specific wordings that they focus on that allows them to re envision uh, through Aponte's words what they were, uh, what he wanted to, uh, what his what mm -hmm. painting uh, was like. And so on the basis of that, information and their own creativity, they envision what that uh, image uh, or that drawing uh, would be like. I should say that uh, some of us are, even though the book of drawings has disappeared, we're still hopeful that in some archive or some library or even in some private collection that, that uh, the book of painting will, will be found. Interesting. So, so it wasn't destroyed then, but just disappeared. Yes. So it, it may still yes. be in existence somewhere. I, that is the hope. That is the huh. hope that is still that is still available uh, in some form, but uh, I think with time uh, we know. But in the event that we don't dis, uh, find it, we do have this beautiful artistic representation of envisioning a, a ponte. And so, uh, once the, uh, the the members of the community of both Vanderbilt and and also the Nashville community will go, they'll be able to see this beautiful exhibit uh, that re-envisions uh, what Aponte had done at that particular moment What do in people time. think happened to the book? Well, um, it's, it's very difficult, but I think uh, because there was such uh, animosity towards uh, Aponte uh, because uh, he was the leader of this conspiracy uh, and, and as we know he was brutally uh, beheaded and, 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 and his head exhibited uh, uh, he was considered to be a threat so anything that he did uh, was a threat now whether he himself made the uh, book disappear yeah. or whether someone else took it and destroyed it, I think is still uh, a mystery to all of us. And then I also wonder, during the trial itself, what do you think the folks interrogating him were trying to get to? Why such detailed questions to make him be so specific in the details of the image that he captured? What were they trying to, to show in that case, or well, accuse him of, I guess? Well, that's a wonderful, that's a wonderful uh, question that also allows us to engage in reimagining or re-envisioning Aponte. And so uh, at that time, I, I, it's quite possible that the uh, book of drawings had already disappeared, but there was such uh, an interest in, in, uh, in, in wanting to interrogate him to find out what these uh, drawings contain, what aspects did to find out uh, if they would have additional information to accuse him, whether they were, were um, uh, um, 
dangerous paintings mm -hmm. or what their contents were but it was uh from what from the transcripts that i that i've read uh it just indicated his interest not only in art but also supporting the art of the time and also expanding uh, those co artistic concepts that later on will filter into what uh, Cuban art would be, yeah. which is incorporating other f uh, figures other than the classical. Now he people also- People of color. Uh, people of color, mm -hmm. but not, and not only of Cuba, but also of other countries of Africa. Uh, he envisioned uh, uh, he he was aware, and this is the fascinating part: is that uh, there was this kind of information circulating in Cuba. Not only what was happening in Europe, uh, what was happening in Italy, what what kind of trends were taking place, but also what was happening in Africa, and the important figures, and what was happening in Haiti. Uh, so all that kind of information was circulating in Cuba, and certainly a ponte was an important figure in assimilating many of these other traditions. I'm referring now to the, uh, to the African uh, uh, diaspora that mm -hmm. was also, and, and it was part of Cuba because of this enslaved system, this, the enslaved that were in Cuba. So here we have a kind of um, incorporating and developing and, and then producing new visions uh, that would later became part of uh, the Cuban nation. There are 60, 63 uh, images that are part of this exhibit. 60 plus, I think, uh, is a number that I read that I think I remember. W yes. what, what stands out as being, um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but a favorite of yours well, that the, really captures they're, they're, it? Um, well, as, as um, we talked, uh, the image that we at the Afro-Hispanic Review, which is an academic journal that's yeah. published at Vanderbilt University, we went with uh, um, Alexis Ezequiel's image of, uh, of a very classical um, individual, John Baptiste, uh, who uh, was part of the uh, of the militia forces of that time. But the way Ezequiel um, works the image is that he looks in that image uh, a a. A, a spirit of a ponte. A ponte's a spirit takes over that image and so he becomes alive through this classical image of, of John Baptiste. Mm -hmm. And so it's fascinating for him to to uh, take a, a very well-known image and then reinterpret it with a ponte's presence. There are so many uh, beautiful images. I'm very much drawn to, to Magda's image uh, where she um, uh, where she plays with colors and she plays with four mm -hmm. and five um, uh, particular uh, uh, symbols that are that are present present in the, in, in the image. The use of, of the blue is and different shades of blue. I'm also uh, drawn to uh, uh, Duval Carrier's. Uh, I think there are five images where that has to do with kind of classical representations, but also he's incorporating uh, those uh, ideas that he focuses on that have to do with the transcript mm -hmm. uh, that that uh, that we have available through uh, that's available at, at at NYU through their website. This exhibit uh, is available for not just the campus community, but for the Nashville community in general. How can people uh, get on campus and, and check it out? Well, um, it's uh, at the uh, Peabody campus in the art gallery. And uh, the best way to, it, it's between the closest, and one of the entrances is on 21st. So um, finding parking, uh, yeah. There, there, there are parking lots uh, available, so it's just a matter of going, seeing which one is most convenient for yeah. you, parking your car and walking over to the gallery, to the art gallery. They don't need tickets or anything like that, mm. but just need to be aware of the yes. hours of the gallery and all yeah. that good stuff. It's free admission. Uh, everyone is welcome, and it's there for all of us, everyone to enjoy.
Excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. Louise. Uh, that is Visionary Aponte Art and Black Freedom. That's on Vanderbilt's campus right now. I know you want to check it out. Uh, also, you can go online at vandy.edu, I bet, and get some information about the exhibit as well if you need some. We appreciate you being here. Thank you so much. Uh, and we appreciate you as well. We'll see okay. you again next time. Thank you, Richard.